Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me. My name is Simeon Balabanov and I'm the product manager of Viri for Unreal. In this webinar, we're going to take a look at what is Viri for Unreal and how you can use it. Viri for Unreal has a twofold purpose. On one hand, it's a real time conduit for non game artists that want to leverage their Viri workflow for a real time engine. Uh, helping you move your existing assets and, and skills uh, from your favorite DCC or content creation application to a real-time engine such as Unreal. For non-Viri users, uh, Viri for Unreal is a photorealistic rendering engine for designers who want high-quality imagery in a real-time engine, increasing the uh, quality that uh, Unreal provides with the renowned ray tracing capabilities that, uh, that Vray is known for. We have a couple of workflows uh, when thinking about Vray for Unreal um, that we came up with, um, and you can see those guys uh, on the screens. Um, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to take a look at the first one in particular, um, moving uh, assets from, uh, from an existing application, in this case 3ds Max, um, exporting it as a very scene and importing that into Unreal for the purpose of light baking and uh, rendering photorealistically. So let's have a look at that. First, I'm going to create a brand new project. I'm going to use 4.19. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to use 4.19 um, and uh, start from scratch so that you can see um, what are the necessary steps to set up your project. I'm going to name this uh, demo webinar. <coughs> and I'm going to create that. Now, once uh, once a brand new project is created, there are no plugins enabled in this project. So, one thing we need to do is uh, enable the very uh, very plugin. You can do that by the pop up here, uh, clicking on Manage Plugins, or an, or an alternative would be to uh, open up the Plugins menu from the Settings options. And it's on my other screen. <coughs> Let's resize this and enable the two plugins that Vray uh, ships with. The second one is a beta plugin, and I'm going to talk about it later on. Then we need to restore the, uh, restart the project. It's going to take a few more seconds. And there we go. We can get rid of this uh, window. Okay. Um, now you can see the V-Ray for uh, Unreal interface. I'm going to pop up the V-Ray settings. Uh, let's rearrange this so that it occupies a bit less um, screen space. Just rearrange this a bit slightly. All right. So the first thing that you can see is uh, the default project in Unreal. Uh, these are the very settings. Um, and let's uh, close a couple of those guys. <coughs> All right. Um, so uh, since this project relies on native uh, entities uh, and there is also existing things in the, in the scene, I'm not going to use those. Uh, I'm, I want to create a brand new uh, empty level. So this is what I'm going to do. And um, this is the level that I'm going to import my existing scene. Um, just a quick word on where you can find another Viri uh, entities. Uh, there is uh, the Viri material instance. Um, but in this case, I'm going to just create a new open a uh, new folder <coughs> and name that assets uh, just to uh, hold my existing uh, assets. And then I'm going to click the import button and navigate to the VR scene that uh, we're going to use in this example. Now that scene was, uh, I'm going to select all the default properties here or the default settings here, and in a couple of seconds it's going to be imported. Um, we're using a scene from the artist uh, called Bertrand Benoit uh, from his classic apartment scene. You can check his uh, webpage or uh, at bbb3viz.com or uh, his TurboSquid channel, um, where you can see the actual scene. 
the first thing I'd like to do, uh, or I always like to do is to uh, save the setup or save the scene, just because in case I change something or an occasional crash happens, uh, no one is insured. Um, it's just software. All right. So um, the first thing you see is that the uh, all the uh, meshes uh, or the or the geometry with its materials is uh, imported. Um, let's have a look at one of the meshes here. Um, yeah, there is on the other screen. Okay. So this is this is the, uh, the these are the interior walls of the room we were setting up. Uh, the one thing you I would like you to change uh, to pay attention is the uh, UVs. Um, the original UVs are on ch channel zero, and we also have uh, light mapping UVs on channel two. <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, if we have a look at the unlit um, section, you will see that all the materials and uh, with their textures have been already imported. Uh, we do approximate the materials um, in this case. For example, we have uh, created this uh, standard VR material with its uh, regular interface. It has the diffuse color, reflection color, uh, Fresnel IOR, glossiness, and so on. Uh, you can assign textures to those guys. Um, and you can also, of course, uh, play around with the settings. I'm actually going to select the material of this chair and try to lower the um, texture, the diffuse texture amount. override the texture, the diffuse uh, color to something red and start blending between the two just to give a bit of uh, coloration on the uh, on the diffuse channel or uh, the diffuse part of this material. A bit more warmer and lower, lower the amount of the diffuse texture a bit. Uh, let's revert the, the change and use what the artist originally intended. Um, okay, let's let's have a look at the lights. Um, in the same manner as we created a uh, similar uh, to the Viri uh, material, we also created a light uh, lights or blueprints uh, for the lights that look similar and and have the same uh, functionality as Viri lights. As in this case, the rectangular light. You can see the common parameters. Um, we also have created a dome light uh, blueprint. It's uh, it's using the native uh, skylight, but uh, extends on that. It's uh, located outside the uh, room, but as you can see, it has controls for uh, for the HDRI, uh, for the rotation intensity. Currently, the intensity is a bit too bright, uh, and there is no color mapping. So if we switch to lit mode, we will get the tone mapper in action. Um, talking about the tone mapper, um, in order to get better viewport parity between what V-Ray uh, uh, renders and and what you see in the viewport, I recommend turning on uh, turning off all of these uh, settings except for the post process material. So only the post process material should be left uh, enabled. <coughs> and when using V-Ray physical camera, uh, you will get the same uh, the same exposure and the same tone mapping as uh, what Viri uh, is going to render in the VFV. So uh, let's go to the render view or the camera that was um, initially created. And uh, <coughs> let's have a look at these uh, parameters. Um, as, uh, as I said, this is the Viri physical camera. Um, and here are all the settings uh, related to that. Uh, I'm going to lower the exposure quite a lot so that we can see something. Uh, of course, um, this is again required because um, um, the lighting hasn't been baked. Um, and in, in this case, the dome light is allowed to go through the walls. Um, so actually, there are no shadows traced at all. Once we do the light baking, everything we, we'll need to go back up uh, on the film speed again um, just to compensate for the darkness. Uh, we also have a burn, uh, Reinhardt burn value if you need to do some uh, aggressive soft clamping um, or minor, <laughs> any kind of, so of uh, clamping. Um, all right. Um, okay, so so currently, currently what we need to do is just uh, uh, do the light baking. I'm going to uh, make something else, however. Uh, before I do the light bake, since it's a time-consuming cons process, 
going to set up uh, uh, a quick render uh, in advance and, and just make sure that the interactive is on. Um, I'm going to just check my uh, sensor width. Uh, it's, it's 36 by 48. And I'm going to set the same aspect ratio for the uh, resolution. And I'm going to do an interactive rendering uh, <coughs> uh, by clicking the very button. Once the scene loads, the idea here is um, that I'm going to use the fact that V-Ray calculates uh, or ray traces the lighting um, as, we, as we go interactively. And I can set up my lighting and materials and uh, objects uh, using the V-Ray frame buffer as an interactive preview window uh, before committing to baking the lighting. Um, and this is just because light baking is a time-consuming process. It, it it can take for a really good for, for a good quality it will take a, a couple of hours um, so so before doing that uh, um, light baking it's always good um, <coughs> let me re resize this just a bit and rearrange so that you can see a bit better so um, it's always a good idea to have um, to, to know what the whole uh, rendering is going to look like the whole baking after after the baking um, is going to look like. So uh, remember when we lowered the film speed, I'm going to increase that again um, because uh, because of the blocking shadows, uh, we, we 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 didn't see too much lighting um, going in, and uh, yeah, in, in this case it uh, overexposes the uh, viewport, and again. This is going to be fixed right after we do the baking. <coughs> so um, what we see on the right side, on the in, in the V-Ray frame buffer, this is what the lighting is going to look like after we bake. Um, before we do that, um, we can, however, however, before we bake, we can actually uh, do some um, uh, changes to the environment or to the lighting or the materials. Um, and just experiment. So in this example, I'm going to lower the intensity of the uh, of the dome light. But uh, first, I'm going to do something uh, something real quick. Uh, the interface is a little bit sluggish, um, and this is because I'm using uh, my only graphics card to render. So what I'm going to do is to turn on the low GPU threat priority. Um, this will help a little bit. Um, making very render less on this graphics card at the expense of course of uh, performance i'm also going to use the quality presets and set this to draft so that we don't uh, um, so that uh, we favor interactivity um, as opposed to uh, performance let's again move this to the side And right after it uh, starts, we'll be able to do some modifications to the scene and and uh, see them interactively. As you can see now, the rendering takes uh, a bit more time to clean up the image, and this is because uh, uh, we we again we favor interactivity uh, instead of performance. If, we, uh, if I turn on the low threat uh, GPU priority, um, the rendering is going to happen much faster. However, the interface is going to be sluggish because I'm using one and the same graphics card for both handling uh, Unreal and the rendering process. <coughs> so one thing that uh, I can see now is that I forgot to turn off the auto uh, auto save. So uh, this is going to uh, interrupt my, my workflow, my uh, creative process. Um, and I'm going to turn it off now. Um, so go to, editor, to the editor preferences. Uh, let's reposition this a bit better. Okay. And uh, I think it was auto backup. Um, uh, no, uh, auto save. So let's, uh, let's disable this guy. Okay. Now it's not going to um, interrupt our process. Okay, so um, then I'm going to open up the uh, history frame buffer, uh, the frame buffer history, set it to a temporary location, and uh, save uh, save the current image there. Just for references, where we from where we started, um, 
and keep the changes that we're going to make, uh, that I'm going to make during the, uh, the rest of the webinar. So let's lower the intensity of the dome light. Um, as you can see, we quite, uh, we, we changed the amount of lighting going in the scene. Uh, it's, uh, it's much more kind of, kind of end of day lighting. And the dominant light source is the uh, rectangular light at the, um, at the right uh, part of the image. So uh, one thing I, I wanted to uh, also show you is uh, <coughs> you can go into render elements and uh, make sure that the noiser is turned uh, on. Um, in this specific example, I would like to, uh, to stress that we do support the NVIDIA AI denoiser, which is uh, really good for this type of situations. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's going to give you, or it's going to try to denoise the image in uh, with just a couple of uh, passes and with re very little information. Um, so I'm going to use this for preview purposes and leave the V-Ray denoiser uh, for production, for production um, scenarios. Um, it's just because the V-Ray denoiser provides better and more stable result, but needs more, uh, uh, more calculations, a better sampled uh, image while the denoiser, uh, the NVIDIA denoiser provides uh, quick results, but uh, it's not, um, uh, it tends to flicker in animation or uh, smudges a little bit the results. Um, so, so I prefer using, uh, using it only for preview purposes. Okay, um, and as you can see, it gives this kind of a, a artistic effect, uh, which may be desired in some situations, but uh, but uh, since it's not consistent, um, you don't have too much control over it. Okay, so um, you can see that we have quite clean image now uh, with some splotches, but this is the way the denoiser works. It's going to clean them up as time goes by. All right. Um, this button, by the way, really quickly switches between the denoise result and the uh, actual rendering. Uh, let's compare. All right, so this is the uh, darker version. All right, so um, again, I'm going to address this uh, light, go back to where we started. Um, so I'm going to try to, uh, to change the contribution of this light a little bit. Um, let's, uh, let's turn it off. Um, uh, well, it didn't kind of change that. Um, okay, so uh, let's actually try lowering the intensity. Um, I don't know. We'll we'll try yeah, probably something like five hundred. <coughs> All right, now it's uh, almost turned off. There is a shadow here, but uh, it's uh, it's much more darker. Okay, so so um, of course you're not only limited to changing the lights. Um, I'm going to try and go for uh, for a night scenario. Um, so in order to get there, I'm going to completely turn off the dome light by setting its intensity to zero. And um, you can see how how different the lighting now looks, uh, just because uh, it's a it's a actually a totally different uh, light setup. Uh, okay, save this guy, uh, compare. All right. The idea again is um, that uh, let's to interact with your scene. Um, for example, I can just grab this guy, <coughs> move it to the side. If uh, if the interface allows me. Again, um, I do recommend having a second uh, secondary graphics card dedicated for rendering. Um, you know, one for the viewport in Unreal and one for uh, rendering with V-Ray. Or using your CPU um, as a as a, a hybrid rendering. Um, let's uh, let's let's make this uh, turned towards the camera. All right. 
Um, of course, you're not only limited to changing the position and lighting um, of your scene. Um, as I showed earlier, you can change uh, the materials as well. So let's give this a go. Uh, so I'm going to lower this again so that the diffuse color um, is the most uh, prominent um, or sorry, uh, so that the diffuse texture is not affecting and, and we can only uh, use the diffuse color to um, change the appearance of the object. And just uh, give it a bit more saturation, a bit more intensity. Save this guy for reference. And uh, let's actually try and change the color of the light. Give it a somewhat cooler appearance. I think Wormwood will be actually uh, better as the original. But um, yes, again, either way, the whole point of, 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 uh, of this demo here is uh, just to show you uh, that you can do multiple variations of that uh, using the interactive rendering. Um, get get a feeling of uh, what what you could do uh, how your scene is going to look like with different material variations different object positions different light setups um have them in the in the history for reference so that you can go back if you want to um and finally um once you're happy with the with the result that you get um again using the vfb as a as a preview if you will um because it calculates the, the GI bounces and the reflections uh, on the fly. Um, uh, actually, the most important thing is the, is, is the uh, indirect illumination and the direct illumination, so all the shadows and the uh, J bounces. Um, because you can render with V-Ray after that, or uh, bake with V-Ray, you will get the same result, uh, however, for your whole light baking scenario. So in the end, I'm going to bring this back as uh, the original uh, author's intent um, to be a daylight scenario. So uh, the dome light, I think it was uh, set to 20. So use this. Um, and uh, just save this guy again for comparison. Uh, so the only thing that I changed was the position of the chair. Uh, probably also the probably also some of the materials, but uh, it's not that big difference. So, um, right, uh, one one last thing is that I don't like the right part of the sofa. It's a bit darker. So I'm going to use a tradi uh, traditional or the typical photographic approach of uh, adding artificial light and uh, boost its intensity. So uh, double this intensity, it was about, um, it was about one, one, 1,500. Let's make it about 4,000. Yeah, much brighter now. Um, so what a photographer, uh, interior photographer would do would be set uh, the camera exposure so that the windows outside are not overexposed, but then everything is going to darken. Uh, save this guy for reference. Um, and to compensate for this, uh, artificial light or additional light is going to be added so that uh, it brightens up the image. And as you can see, the result uh, is, is much more balanced. Uh, it really nicely complements with the, uh, yeah, there, there, there wasn't the noiser in the first, uh, in the first reference image. So let's compare the undenoised result. All right, so I'm happy with this result. Um, I'm going to use it for light baking. Um, stop the rendering currently and, um, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and do the light baking part. Now, um, since I just want to, um, I just want to uh, iterate quickly with, uh, yeah, really quickly sa save that uh, before doing any major steps uh, such as light baking. I always like to save. 
All right, so uh, let's set up for light baking. Uh, make sure that we're on uh, draft preset. As you can see, this changes a couple of settings at the same time, the samples limit, the noise uh, limit, uh, also the GI uh, light cache subdivisions. So they are all set up uh, by the quality uh, preset slider. So using draft, um, I don't want you guys to wait. So we're going to do a really quick light bake to, uh, in the first place. One thing I want to mention is uh, it's a good idea to use the auto exposure, but not the auto white balance. And in order to auto exposure to work, um, uh, interactive should be off. So I'm uh, unticking this. Um, and um, yeah, I think I think this is about it. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and do the light bake. Oh yes, uh, sorry about this. Uh, one important part, the really important part, uh, you have to set up your lights to static. This instructs uh, Unreal actually that this light is going to be baked um, and should be uh, calculated from the light maps uh, in the end. In uh, in the very frame, uh, sorry, in the very rectangular light, we have an enable light uh, after light bake. Uh, this is actually um, a way to instruct that this light should be static. You can do it before or after the light bake uh, in this case, so it doesn't matter. But for the, uh, so let's do the light baking from V-Ray menu and do light bake. Um, now what V-Ray will do is take all the, uh, all the objects and the scene and material and export it to V-Ray and uh, initiate the light baking process. Um, it will take all the objects and line them up in a, in a really large map, uh, which we called an atlas. Um, it takes actually all the UVs on the uh, second channel that I just showed you, the, the channel for uh, light maps, and aligns them one next to each other um, for generating the lighting, uh, lighting maps. Both uh, directional and indirectional lighting is going to be calculated uh, by V-Ray. As you can see, the uh, resolution of this light map is, is uh, quite large. It's about 4,000 pixels by uh, 1,618. Um, but you can see all the objects are pretty nicely, <coughs> pretty uh, lined up pretty nicely and are rendered all together. Uh, the cool thing about this, this is that uh, if you see that something is wrong, uh, you can immediately uh, stop the render. Uh, apologize about about that. Uh, so um, you can you can uh, you can see which object is which, and if, for example, uh, there is something bright red that shouldn't be there, or uh, you know some some shadow is uh, wrong. Uh, for example, if I if I zoom in and uh, take a look at that. Uh, for example, this object here is the floor. Uh, and uh, let's have a look around. Um, yeah, this guy here um, is uh, the vegetate the plant on the table. Uh, this one is the uh, sofa. So yeah, you, you, you can guess the objects and uh, you can see if something is wrong. So you can stop it immediately. Uh, because this is a progressive render, you see the f in the first couple of seconds you do see the the uh, final outcome. Uh, all right. So uh, another thing that you can do uh, actually is uh, you can stop uh, the rendering uh, by pressing the stop button, um, which will interrupt the rendering, but but take the current state of the rendering and import the the current light maps. Um, unlike the close button, which uh, if you press the close button. Um, now it's going to cancel the rendering and not import anything. So I'm going to use the stop one um, that will take the the current uh, solution and apply it to my map. Uh, it will take a couple of seconds uh, to first f uh, to import the maps, but uh, but right after that you will see the the baked solution. The bottom line is uh, make sure that you're using the appropriate option when canceling or stopping. Uh, the light baking. Okay, so uh, the solution should pop up any second now. There we go. So that's the result. Uh, let's let's go into perspective mode and walk around, uh, see see where we are, where we're at. So um, currently we have uh, 
uh, double contribution. If you disable the light, you see that uh, the lighting becomes a little bit different or uh, we eliminate some of the parts. Uh, we can see a little bit of uh, uh, artifacts here. I'm going to switch to light only, uh, lighting only mode so that we can analyze just the light maps. Um, and as you can see, uh, there are some uh, low resolution artifacts. These are actually the pixels. Um, there might be some noise in there because we are the, the draft quality actually. And a great way to analyze uh, the resolution is switching to light map intensity. Um, that's optimization view mode. So check this out. The moment I switch, um, every pixel is represented by a square on this map. Um, the, and, and there is also a heat map show, showing between, um, uh, so blue is uh, lower density of textile, textile density, red is uh, more than enough, and uh, green is somewhere in between. Now, uh, you can override this, uh, um, the size of the light mass by going here. Um, so I'm going to just uh, slide this up to the right. I, I like to use somewhat uh, uh, orange shade uh, going towards red, especially for the objects that are um, going to be in the uh, in the center of the attention or you know the, the, the hero objects. So let's do this for the uh, all the objects in the scene. Um, for the walls, I'm going to use a somewhat brighter shade of, uh, of red or uh, orange. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and also for the floor, of course, it, it depends on how close you would like, uh, um, you know, you intend the viewer to go uh, to the wall, uh, how close to the wall you allow uh, your users to go. Um, <coughs> also, um, if you have tiny, uh, small, intricate details, you might want larger uh, UV, UV map sizes or, um, or if the unwrapping is not that good, I'm going to readjust these guys. Uh, so if your unwrapping is not that good, you can also increase the light map resolution. Um, so I think overall we we're okay. Uh, these logs are a bit low, but I'm going to um, skip them because uh, they're going to be dark anyway. So we don't need that much quality, uh, definition there. So back in light in lit mode, you will see that all the objects that uh, um, I changed resolution. Uh, to of uh, are actually black. Um, this is because the existing low resolution light maps are no longer valid for them. So um, we need to do a relight, uh, a rebake of the lighting. So I'm going to um, actually change the settings here before I do a, um, a, another light bake. Um, actually, I'm thinking about increasing uh, all of the settings by using the slider. So let's use fast. Um, this lowers, this increases the sampling quality. And I'm also going to enable the distributed rendering. Now uh, I have another um, render node <coughs> hooked to, to, to assist with the rendering so that you guys don't need to wait um, too much. So now the resolution is uh, higher, as you can see. Um, it went to, oops, sorry about this. Uh, I just clicked on uh, away, so bring the VAB back on focus. So um, you can see the resolution went up to 4000 by 2200. Um, and any second now, <coughs> the, uh, the rendering is going to pop up. Okay, there we go. Um, now you can see the larger texture is uh, for the floor and the ceiling. Um, it will take a bit of time to to re-render. Now, um, again, being progressive rendering, you can see if something is wrong, you can stop it, or you can even stop it uh, before reaching the final quality. And by using the stop button, it will import the, the current results. Um, <coughs> one thing that uh, is useful in this approach is to have the denoiser um, progressively denoising. So if you decide that at some point the quality is good enough for you, you can you can stop that and uh, and use this result instead of waiting for uh, the final thresh noise threshold. But in this case, I'm going to just wait for the whole solution. Um, once the, the, the rendering is finished, uh, we do a denoise. Um, 
But before that, uh, since there is no good, uh, there is no progress bar yet, um, I've also added the sample rate render element, and you can check the progress here. Um, if there are white pixels in this map, in this uh, render element, this means that they're still rendering. Um, so as soon as soon as the white pixel disappear, the result is going, the rendering is going to be finished. Um, all right, so it will take just a couple more seconds to to reach the final threshold, and then um, and then uh, the VFB is going to, or VR is going to denoise that um, and uh, automatically close the VFB. And again, automatically import the light maps. Basically, you don't need to do anything at this, at this stage. Uh, just uh, wait for that uh, to finish. <coughs> All right. The denoising takes a bit more time because uh, because the image is uh, of large resolution. So, okay. Now the denoising is done. It will be closed automatically and. In just a few seconds, the results are going to be imported. There we go. All right, um, let's walk around, just analyze. Yeah, immediately we can see the quality is much better. Um, the the low resolution artifacts are fixed now. If we take a look at lighting again, you may see some lighting seams or, or some uh, artifacts from the uh, bump here and there. But basically, uh, yeah, let's let's uh, disable now the secondary effect of the light, all right, to make it uh, to make it more uh, true to reality. To remove the double effect of the lighting. All right, um, and now as you can see, uh, because there is only indirect illumination coming from the uh, from the skylight or from the uh, dome light, uh, the the exposure now is good with the uh, 1600 ISO uh, because, well, it's not that bright uh, because uh, everything is in the shadow, actually, and uh, the majority of lighting comes from the, uh, from the uh, GI. <coughs> um, I'm going to open up the frame buffer so that we can try uh, the, and do a comparison. So... Um, that was the last result that we rendered. Compare that with the uh, bake. As you can see, it looks very, very similar. Um, so the results, the results of the light baking is quite predictable. You can trust on the uh, Vray frame buffer to be as a guide to 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 give you an idea of what the light baking is going to look like uh, before. Again, um, I cannot stress enough. That's why I'm repeating this. Uh, just getting getting the result before doing the light baking. Um, now another another thing uh, you can do is uh, instead of using the uh, embedded color mapping or tone mapping of Vray, uh, you can use the the one that is uh, the, the the methods for tone mapping in Unreal. Um, so I'm going to create a, a post process volume. Um, you can do that also per camera, but uh, I feel it's a bit more convenient using the post-process volume. So I just created one. I'm going to go to the um, uh, settings and make it uh, un un unbound, uh, infinite, so that it applies on the whole scene. And I'm going to try and... Uh, actually, first we need to enable the uh, all the secondary post-process effects. Uh, so basically the one that we um, disabled in the beginning. All right, so uh, just enable those, and then now immediately you will see that we have um, the vignetting, uh, the eye adaptation that uh, changes exposure based on what what uh, we're currently looking at. And another thing I notice is uh, the objects or all the materials look quite diffuse. Uh, this is because there is no reflection. Um, and these materials have a reflection component, but but there are no trace reflections in the real. So I'm going to add a spherical reflection capture, which uh, is the way um, is the way the reflections are done um, in Unreal. So you can see, uh, check this table currently. Uh, let me just reposition that so that you can see a bit better the reflections. 
Okay, so if I if I turn off the the uh, spherical reflection capture, see all the speculars disappear, and it's also not only the table. Um, um, the majority of the materials in the scene actually have some uh, specular reflection component, um, and as you can see, it's a uh, quite quite um, uh, quite obvious uh, when you don't have uh, reflection. So I'm going to turn off uh, turn on game mode. That will this will hide all the uh, helper objects in the viewport and I'm going to uh, actually select the post process volume and start um, tweaking some of its parameters to get somewhat nicer results um, let's start with the chromatic aberration again that's uh, that's a lens effect um, you can change the uh, metering mode of the auto exposure and the bias uh, from here, uh, but I'm not, not going to do so. Um, let's add a little bit of bloom just to see how it looks like. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think the scene needs any bloom. So um, yeah, so we, you can just play around with these guys um, if you if you feel like it. Um, this process is good for um, uh, using the native film tone mapper because uh, the VFB, the, the VRE frame buffer, does not support uh, filmic tone mapping. So uh, you can you can play with those parameters over here. Um, but if you wanna if you want to use uh, things like white balance uh, for the color temperature um, and uh, some contrast or uh, color balance for the shadow midtones and highlights, the, these are supported. So uh, you can get a parity. I'm going to tune down the intensity of the chromatic aberration because uh, I feel it's uh, a little bit uh, too much, and uh, yeah, I'm 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 kind of kind of happy. Um, now this this mapping or this post processing is going to work in your standalone application if you will if you wish to um, embed it, um, and will will not affect the very uh, tone mapping. Now uh, talking about standalone. I'm going to um, show you something else. Um, now expand the content. Uh, make sure that you have enabled the plugin and engine content uh, checkboxes. And then scroll all the way down um, until you find the Viri Teleport blueprint. Um, there you'll find uh, blueprint, uh, the, sorry, the Viri Teleport pawn. Um, there it is. <coughs> you just drag it and drop it in your scene. And that's a plugin based on blueprints that will help you set up uh, a walkthrough experience. Uh, currently, we don't have a VR device, so I'm going to disable that. But if you do have a VR device, you can just uh, um, set this to uh, on. And um, there is also another important uh, parameter to set it up. Uh, it's the viewpoint list. Um, it's supposed to, you can make camera presets from locations where you can teleport. I'm going to select the only camera that we have in the in the uh, this project in the level. That was the imported one, and if I press the play button, um, it starts from the camera that we just uh, uh, created. Uh, pay attention that you're not limited to staying there. You can just walk around, and and the user is free to to move. Uh, and also, the color mapping is uh, is the one is the different is, is a different one. It's it's actually the one that was set for the V-Ray camera. Um, if you want to uh, create new standpoint, uh, new viewpoints, uh, you you can just create uh, regular cameras or duplicate the V-ray frame camera. Um, if you use the, the cinematic camera, um, you will keep the tone mapping. Let's actually switch to look through the camera because it's easier to set it up this way. Let's go somewhere over here. Um, right about, right about so. I'm going to um, expand the aspect ratio and give it a little bit of uh, more field of view. The other way around, okay. And I'm going to duplicate this camera, uh, create another one. Uh, so the the shortcut is Control W, but uh, I'm going to show it through the menu. All right, uh, switch to the other one. Um, Okay, let's reposition this guy over there, just somewhere the other, facing the other way around, uh, somewhere in the back. All right. Um, 
Okay, and now you need to uh, select your uh, teleport pawn again, add a couple of uh, viewpoints. So I'm going to select the newly created ones. And you know what, I'm going to actually add the, uh, the standard one, the, the, the imported one, so that you can see that there is a difference between the, the tone mapping. So the first one is, uh, is this, and it, as you can see, it has the filmic tone mapping and the uh, eye adaptation. You're still free to walk around. And by pressing the right, uh, the right arrow on the keyboard, um, or the left one, you switch between the two, between the viewpoints in the list. So again, uh, just teleporting and changing the tone mapping as well, uh, but still allowing you to move around, walk around, uh, look around, um, right. So this way you can uh, direct the user experience. Uh. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the limitations or you know the, the considerations that you need to have uh, in mind. This These are, you have to have uh, proper UVs. This is for uh, light baking, of course. This means uh, non-overlapping, all fitting within the zero to one UV space um, and covering as much as possible of the texture space. Um, you also have to have simple shaders and this is for, um, uh, con well, let's consider this, this uh, example. This complicated shader uh, has a lot of unsupported nodes in Unreal, like the dirt map, the ambient occlusion, um, the procedural noise maps, uh, and the blending is, uh, is different than in Vigray. The same, the same uh, material can be brought down to this guy, which has only one uh, texture per slot, um, and and it looks the same. Um, the same example with this guy um, from from these procedural uh, shading network, you can get only this very simple uh, two-sided material with a single texture. The benefits you get are uh, quite a lot, uh, starting with the rendering speed. Even in V-Ray, the condensed material renders uh, almost two times faster. And also another uh, another thing is that uh, these materials are going to be faster even in uh, Unreal as well. The frame rate is going to be much more optimized. Um, so, so it's always a good idea to use um, optimized uh, materials. On a different subject, um, you can have multiple light baking solutions for a level in Unreal. So in this case, I animated the sun um, to make a, a light study and um, the lighting stays flat uh, when we play the animation. Uh, also, the objects don't generate proper contact shadows. Some of the objects uh, uh, switch uh, start to look strange because they're not part of the light map anymore. If you render this with a ray tracing solution, uh, with ray tracing from V-Ray, you get to see how dramatic the lighting changes uh, based on the uh, you know GI uh, global illumination. And now this is with the auto exposure and uh, auto white balance to give it more consistent look. Since this animation rendered uh, for only two minutes per frame, you can use this to your advantage to um, select a time of day that you really like and uh, take the position and actually the light setup at this uh, time of day and uh, bake the lighting um, for your real-time experience um, for that time of day. So again, uh, using the ray tracing functionalities of V-Ray as, as a guide. So to wrap up here, are the key benefits, uh, starting with the interoperability to get your uh, projects from your favorite DCC, keeping your existing workflow, keeping the parity, and of course, providing the quality that V-Ray is renowned for, uh, for the ray traced effects, such as soft shadows, uh, GI reflections, refractions, um, and so on. We uh, only support the Windows operating system. We also uh, build V-Ray for Unreal on the hybrid uh, rendering engine, which means that you can utilize all of your graphics cards uh, and CPUs. And we also support distributed rendering using the universal V-Ray Render, uh, Next Render node. We talked about uh, hybrid rendering. We talked about the global illumination. We support the Vuri Light Cache um, as a cached lighting solution and Brute Force uh, as well. Um, that's both for light baking and rendering, of course. Um, one important part here is that we support some uh, a subset of the native uh, shading nodes in Unreal, but we are going to expand this, we, and we are expanding this, um, so uh, let us know which ones you're using the most so that we can uh, prioritize the development of those first. Uh, we also have the um, render elements, animation support out of the level sequencer. 
Um, and on the roadmap is um, being able to see the rendered re result directly in the viewport on Unreal and allow for uh, runtime rendering from a, from a standalone application or a cooked game uh, from within Unreal. For more information, uh, you can go to our website, give it a try. We have a 30-day trial uh, period or to our web for uh, our forums where you can uh, ask all of your questions and give us your feedback. So um, if you have any requests, we want to hear from you. Um, if you want to report something to us or let us know how we're doing, um, please do so. And uh, thank you for watching. On behalf of the Viri for Unreal team, I'd like to thank you for joining us. It's been a real pleasure and we hope to see you next time. Take care and goodbye.